While housing prices are taking a huge hit in many cities across the country, most of them are on the West Coast. And you might be surprised to find out that if you are buying or selling a home in Kansas City this year, Kansas City's real estate market is actually one of the most undervalued housing markets across the country. And not just for buying a home, but for renting a home too. In this video, we're going to break down exactly why. Now this all starts with an article from fortune.com. They produce these nice little graphs just like this one. And you can tell that across the country, most of the fallout is on the West Coast. You'll see some red scattered throughout the, the Midwest and the, the East Coast as well, but most of this is very concentrated. And when we zoom in on Kansas City, you can see that there really hasn't been much of a change. There is less than a 0.3% difference between the peak of Kansas City home values and where we stand right now. Now keep in mind this information is seasonally adjusted, so it's based on year over year averages, but in the previous video we did a couple weeks ago, we found out that year over year from January 2022 to January 2023, home prices still increased despite one of the highest increases in mortgage rates since the 1980s. Now based on all of those headlines that are predicting a terrible housing recession, if we peel back the curtain even more and compare the gains in some of these cities that are taking hits now compared to those hits, they're still coming out on top. In fact, if you look at San Francisco, Seattle, San Diego, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, these are all places that had artificially inflated home prices from the get-go and cost of living increases because inflation has been going up and everyday goods have been getting so much more expensive have squeezed out a good percent of those gains, but not all of them. Of course, this all depends on how everything plays out over the next couple months and the rest of the year. But if you look at the left side of this chart, You'll notice places like Chicago, Cleveland, Minneapolis, Detroit, Atlanta, etc. Their losses are a drop in the bucket compared to the gains. But here's another thing is that Kansas City is obviously not on this list. In fact, we're on a whole different list for being one of the most undervalued housing markets in the entire country. This article from US News went through all of those markets that were not on the previous chart, all of the markets that haven't taken a huge hit yet. And they compared these markets to one key stat, which is percent of income, going towards housing payment. See, if you've ever talked to a lender or financial advisor or purchased a home, you know that they try to keep your housing expenses, your mortgage payment, under 30% of your overall monthly income. So for example, if you make $6,000 before taxes, ideally we keep your, your housing payments under or at $1,800. Now the two big takeaways in this article were one, that most undervalued markets to purchase a home are located predominantly in the Midwest. And two, the most undervalued markets to rent a home are located in the Midwest, led by Omaha, St. Louis, Cleveland, and of course, yours truly, Kansas City. So based on that income in the area compared to housing payments, Kansas City is ranking in the top 10 for some of the most affordable housing markets across the country. Now you'll notice that it sits right under Omaha and Oklahoma City with a payment to income ratio of about 28.2%. And the farther down the list we go, the more these markets start to resemble some of the overheated markets we previously discussed, where the percent of income going to housing payments is closer to 35 or even 40%, which is just mind boggling. So basically the big takeaway here is that housing affordability isn't just where home prices are at, it's, it's based on the incomes of people living in that area compared to home prices. And Kansas City just happens to be in the top 10, which is exactly why I think and several other publications like Redfin and Zillow have published articles that say very, very similar things. Now, let's move on to the rental situation because this gets even more interesting. Now, while Kansas City is in the top 10 when it comes to buying a home and the affordability of that compared to monthly incomes, it's even more affordable to rent a home in Kansas City. That 28% for buying a home now turns into 25.4% when you're renting a home. We go from top 10 to top four in the entire country. But let me back up a little bit. This is not a commentary on why renting is more affordable than buying a home. In fact, 
I think a good rule of thumb is that if you're going to stay in one place for five years or longer, I think it almost always makes sense to buy a home because by that fifth year, the, the third, fourth, fifth year, you're paying down a lot of principal on that mortgage payment, meaning you're building equity, you're essentially depositing money into a bank account in addition to the amount of money that that home appreciates by. It grows in value over time. So there's like a two for one benefit when you're owning versus when you rent a home. But if you're staying somewhere for less than three years, I think it absolutely makes sense to rent and living in Kansas City just means that your money is going to go so much further than living in one of these other cities with really, really high rents. So what does this all lead to? What does this mean if you're buying or selling a home in Kansas City? Even if you live in Kansas City or you're moving to Kansas City and planning a relocation, I think there's certainly a big trend that we're about to see with people moving from these unaffordable and more expensive markets to Kansas City just because their money goes further, which squeezes and increases demand, it squeezes supply even more. Luckily, you can watch this video about why builders are building and that can help with some of the supply issue. But on balance, I would expect this to be a huge driver for price increases in Kansas City's real estate market over the next decade. And if you're if that puts you at odds and you're wondering, you know, should I should I buy a home now or should I wait for home prices to fall? I think it's really, really hard are nearly impossible to time the market. You can get lucky, but we all know that, that if we zoom out 20, 30 years, that home prices will certainly go up. So is timing the market something that's in your best interest? I think that's for you to decide. But if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button so you see next week's market update, property tours, and all things Kansas City real estate. If you liked what you heard in this video or you'd like me to, to apply all of this expertise on your behalf if you're buying or selling a home in Kansas City, whether you're local or you're moving to Kansas City, I would love to help. All of my contact info is in the description. Give me a call, text, email. I'm quick to respond and we'll set you up for success. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.